What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Tower Number no. Nine uh, Christmas special here. So I am pre-recording a video to be released on Christmas Eve and one on Christmas itself. And uh, in honor of the sort of holiday colors as they're commonly understood in pop culture, both of these videos are going to feature the so-called Christmas Leia build, which is uh, that is when you have a uh, command, you have Leia for the command, which is green, and then you have uh, an aggression base, which is red. This is both a build that's actually pretty good in the meta right now, and uh, also one that I think is on theme for the holiday. So enjoy the, uh, this is going to be the first one. This time I'm playing, uh, I'm actually playing Cunning Sabine against Faith, who is playing the so-called Christmas Leia. And uh, I believe the next video will have me being the one playing the, uh, the so-called Christmas Leia. So then, um, we will, yeah, let's let's get things going here. So we'll have the, um, my opponent leads off with the Green Squad Udrin A-Wing, pretty standard starting card. I'm going to play Leia Organa Defiant Princess and ready a resource, which I then use to play a Spec Force Soldier. My opponent spends three on a, uh, spends three on a Fleet Lieutenant, swings in for five damage. Um... I'm going to go ahead and use a. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use a wing leader to buff my spec force soldier, uh, giving him two experience. Opponent takes the initiative. Oh yes, also on the first turn I did use uh, I did use Sabine's ability. So then spec force soldier hits for four, Leia hits for two, and I will use Sabine's ability for another one to both bases. And then I actually play a metal ceremony, giving it a further experience to both the spec force soldier and to Leia. So. Feeling pretty good about this opening, quite frankly. I feel like I'm getting started pretty fast here. The um, the double two two opening is ki is kind of weak to some ground plays, but if the opponent is go uh, goes into the space arena, it can be very strong. So now we're gonna move on, and we're gonna see what happens uh, here in the second turn. My opponent opts to use Leia for a double attack, uh, having the uh, a wing there defeat my wing leader and having the fleet lieutenant trade with my uh, trade with my Leia. Uh, I go ahead and swing in for five with my buffed spec force soldier. Um, my opponent is going to play a spec force soldier of his own. I use Sabine's ability for one damage to each base. My opponent spends three for an open fire on my spec force soldier, which doesn't remove him, but my opponent can use Tarkin Town to clear him off. Uh, I spend, uh, or I don't spend anything, I deploy Leia. Tarkin Town used to clear my veteran soldier. Sabine swings in, I said I deploy Leia, I deploy Sabine. Sabine swings in for three damage. And uh, then we're going to play K2SO. And so then we're going to, um... yeah, we're going to, we're going to go on to the next turn here. Let's see how we do. I'm feeling pretty good right now, having done 17 damage already. I only need eight more to close out this game. Uh, my opponent uses um, my opponent uses uh, Leia's ability to attack with both units, doing five to my base. I have K2 swing in for four. I have a Bamboozle and an Ezra Bridger in hand. Uh, my opponent deploys Leia. I go ahead and swing for three on the base. And I am now in a very solid position because if either of my units attacks or if K2 is defeated, I actually win the game. Um, so feeling feeling pretty good about this one. Um, and... Yeah, so we see um, my opponent basically concedes this one, um, and so that's going to be a quick win for Sabine. This is this is actually a league match. Also, I didn't mention that at first, but this this is a match being played in the Take the Initiative online league. Um, so I had taken this video earlier, but had not, or uh, I had taken this footage earlier, but had not made a video of it yet, and uh, we'll have that video up shortly. I don't know exactly which Sabine build I was using for this, but I was using Sabine. Um, 
I have I have some different styles of Sabine that I've been trying out. So one of them is like a four cause I believe in test where it's very heavy on heroic units. Um, and because it's a lead game, we are doing some sideboarding. And so I'm looking at my sideboard here. So my sideboard is oriented towards um, potential situations where I have to include more like control type cards. I believe this is the four cause version of my Sabine deck. Um, so I don't really want to include these because I feel like I'm faster than him and my and my game plan is just going to be to race right now. There is an argument that I should actually remove um, some of the slower cards and replace them with things uh, with like shoot first or whatever. So, But this is the four cause deck. And uh, let's see whether or not I uh, we'll see whether or not I manage to manage to get the win in uh, game two here, which would cause me to win the match as a whole. If not, uh, Faith could get the win, and we'd be on to round three. These are going to be uh, some quick games here because we are playing um, we are playing very aggressive decks. So I think I'm looking at I think I'm looking at sub uh, substituting in uh, what is that. Okay, so I think I actually am I am considering removing for a cause and playing Waylay. Um, and the thinking behind that is that for a cause um, is kind of a reach card for slower matchups. And I may be thinking, you know, by the time I get to play for a cause, like I like the game is already maybe over. I need stuff that's going to give me the advantage early on in case my opponent has a like wing leader on an early ship or something. Maybe I can use that waylay, uh, bounce it back. So I do end up actually do end up removing for a cause. I misremembered what I was going to do with that sideboard. And sorry about that, guys. And then we're going to go. Uh, so this time my opponent leads off with the rebel saboteur or the rebel pathfinder, I believe, to cost two three with saboteur. Um. I use Sabine's ability uh, for one damage to each base. My opponent takes the initiative. Um, I could just take the initiative here, but I am going to deploy Leia Defiant Princess. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have anything else to do with her. I just deploy her. Uh, so I was actually quite a poor start for me. Just starting with a 2-2 is pretty bad, especially when it's a 2-2 in the same arena where your opponent just deployed a 2-3. My opponent has a very straightforward trade here that uh, puts me in an unfortunate spot, and indeed we see that. So Leia defeated uh, quite rapidly there. I play red three. I'm going to try to at least develop something on this board. Definitely a start that puts me a fair bit behind, though. This is not how I want to start off the game. My opponent plays a uh, Fighters for Freedom. So I could, I, there's really two options here. It's, um, I could use Sabine's ability or I could take the initiative. I end up deciding that I'm going to use Sabine's ability here. Um, there is a risk that this means my opponent can play like an open fire and defeat my uh, red three before he gets a chance to attack, which would be super negative for me. But I think maybe what I was, maybe I was thinking I got to just try and push damage. Um, my opponent uses Leia's ability with the first action for a double attack here. Um, I play Leia, uh, Leia Defiant Princess and ready a resource. I'm going to then be able to use Fleet Lieutenant to have a buffed attack with Red 3, assuming it doesn't get cleared. I'm kind of taking a risk here. My opponent plays Admiral Akbar and is able to deal 3 damage because he has 3 ground units, uh, so it clears off uh, Leia Defiant Princess. I have the Fleet Lieutenant uh, buff red 3, swinging in for 5 total damage. My opponent plays a Metal Ceremony, buffing both of his ground units. Not something that I like to see. I'm going to go ahead and use Sabine's ability for 1 damage to each base, since my opponent's going to get the initiative anyway. Then I play Sabine and swing in for 4, thanks to the buff from, uh, thanks to the buff from red 3. And it looks like May 5th. Didn't realize that at first. We get, we get the right thing going, though. Um... So this actually, I resource here, but I shouldn't. And then I was like, wait, can I take that back? And, and he does uh, graciously grant me that. Um, the reason I, I want to take that back is because this turn I probably want to bamboozle for free. Um, so my opponent leads off with a double attack defeating Sabine. So first it's the uh, first the Fighters for Freedom, and then Admiral Akbar swing in. And they do also heal the base here. So base healed for one from the Restore on Akbar. My Fleet Lieutenant swings in for 4, thanks to his buff from Red 3. Leia deploys. Uh, I think what I do here... 
So I so I could play Bamboozle for free by discarding the other Bamboozle to exhaust Leia. Um, alternatively, I could play Bamboozle for two and actually use the Surprise Strike. Um, I think if I if I Bamboozle, yeah, I Bamboozle discarding Bamboozle, so this will exhaust Leia. My opponent can still swing in with the um, with the saboteur to hit my base for three potentially, um, but I'm going to be able to hit the opposing base for three with my red three and then play K two, which I think is actually going to put me in a pretty decent spot despite my weak start. However, my opponent still has five resources with which to mess with me, so a consortium star viper hits the field. Really, not a unit that I want to see. It's quite a good counter to this sort of thing. So that's a three cost three three with restore two if you have the initiative, and it's a I think it's a strong sideboard card against Sabine in particular, and also against Leia, other rebel aggro type stuff. Um, it works especially well if you have the energy conversion lab to ambush it in. But in general, you can often get restore against Sabine, especially. Uh, you can often get initiative against Sabine, especially. So you will have that restore. So then. The uh, red three hits the base, and then I play K2SO. K2 is something I really like to see here, because he has that bonus damage when defeated, so even if my opponent clears him, he'll still do some damage. And I have two surprise strikes in hand, which is making me actually pretty optimistic, even though my board is much worse than that of my opponent, because my opponent only has seven life left, and even though he'll be able to heal two with the um, Star Viper, which we see here, there's there's the healing, I'm going to be able to do some major damage myself. Um, so we go ahead with a surprise strike using the fleet lieutenant. So that's going to be, uh, that ends up inflicting um, six damage on the base, uh, leaving the base at three life. So now if my opponent defeats K2, I, I actually win from the three damage with K2's ability. Um, and what my opponent could do here is attack with Leia, have Leia defeat K or um no, actually that wouldn't work. I was gonna say I could attack with Leia and then Akbar, but the when defeated would go off too soon. So my opponent could attack here with Akbar and restore one, but the problem is then K2 attacks and wins and uh puts uh, yeah, still wins the game by just doing four damage. If my opponent defeats K2, then uh K2's ability still still wins. It's a tough situation, and I'm not sure my opponent has an out for it. Yeah, I think um I think Faith actually ends up I think Faith actually ends up perhaps conceding the game here because it's basically over. That K2 has put him in sort of a double bind. If he attacks with Akbar to heal, he doesn't defeat K2, and K2 can attack and clear the base. Um, if he uh, if he attacks and defeats K2, then K2 inflicts three damage to the base with his when defeated ability. So in this case, I was able to come back from a weak start and ultimately get the win. Um, interesting, interesting scenario here, but uh, yeah, ultimately a. A victory for uh, a victory for a cunning Sabine build against the Christmas Leia deck, uh, and yeah, so I think this is going to be my uh, this is going to be my Christmas Eve video, and I have another video planned uh, where I will be playing the so-called Christmas Leia. Um, you know, this is obviously a bit a bit jokey and not really very deeply holiday themed. It's just the uh, the colors that are popularly associated with it, but. Uh, I sincerely wish all viewers a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and uh, I will look forward to um, I'll look forward to putting out some more Star Wars Unlimited content as things go on. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and we will be back later with some more Star Wars Unlimited content. I will catch you guys later.